All right. It's 11.44. I have all my tools out. I think I, I may have a few that I, I don't need, but I didn't want to keep going back and forth between the other garage. All right, my Jeep, it's currently stock, except for these 33-inch tires. Uh, I've already marked the other side of the car with the current height of the Jeep. Um, so right now, I'm going to build some wood blocks to lift my jack stands. I've seen this in some other videos. I probably want to get an extra four inches of lift to help so that when I am installing the two and a half lift, I can get the chassis a little bit higher. After that, I'll just jack the Jeep up. Okay, so there's the, the increase in the jack stand. So that'll give me about three and a half, four inches more of height. I think that'll help when I remove the springs or put the new springs in. And I did the same thing with the for the jack. This one I'm a little less concerned about because it's going to lift the pumpkin and uh, so once I jack the car up and put the jack stands under I'll probably not use the wood here but we'll see how stable it is. All right so we got it jacked up but this was my biggest concern just you know I only have 33 inch tires but I didn't know how I was going to do this so and where to put the jacks so I built those little lifts and then I lifted the car onto those jack stands, okay? But this control arm here, or whatever they call that thing, keeps the tire low, so it really didn't raise the car, or you know, the tire off the ground. I did that on both sides, and so then what I figured from all the videos I watched is once I raised it off of the axle or the pumpkin, then I got really good clearance under the tires. So my only concern is when we put the springs on. But I think then I'll use that that guy. That did work. I used those for the jack stands, but I didn't need it for the pumpkin. But So I'm up. I'm going to take these tires off. I loosened them before I raised it, but I'm going to take them entirely off and put them under the middle of the car because that's what they say for safety's sake. Uh, plus it'll keep it out of the way while I'm in my, my garage. All right, Freeman's helping me. Say hi, Free. All hi. right. So we took the tires off, we're right at almost an hour, we're 50 minutes in. We followed etiquette, put it underneath there, and now we're going to do all the cable uh, assemblies. First I'm going to show the video on the Terraflex install, I'll review it one more time. But we're going to take off, Freeman, we're going to take off that brake line right there, so that when we drop this axle, uh, this doesn't snap. So we're going to take that off. Uh, we're going to snip this. This is your uh, emergency brake line. So you go back there and you snip it right at the base. And then there's a, a breathe valve right here. See this one right here, Freeman? Mm -hmm. Right here. Way back there. That one comes off. And then we're, we're home free. So, again, hour in. Feeling confident? Me too. Alright, we're at two hours. We ran into a tough part, the uh, ray, uh, the rear sway bar connects. They are just completely rusted in place. So we use the, the you know, rust release oil, but they are a tough one. And then I don't have a 19 inch or a 19 millimeter crescent, so, or a tool. So we've been using a hand adjustable one, but it keeps stripping to hold the back of the sway bar release. So we got one off. The other one, we're going to come back after lunch. It's, uh, we're letting that stuff work on the, the rust or the, you know, just loosen it up. But we're, we're close. It's just, it's, uh, it's tough without the right wrench. Okay. Funny update after a refreshing lunch came out. And I thought to myself, let me triple check that old bag of wrenches. And it had a 19 millimeter. <laughs> so I took it out, went over. It was still super seized and, you know, it probably loosened up over lunch. But having that 19 millimeter, uh, it came off in another five minutes. So anyways, it is now tw uh, two, 220. So we're going on about two and a half hours. We've got everything off the back. And now we are going to uh, start trying to lower it and get that spring out. Okay, so that worked really well. 
So we made sure all the cable lines were free on both sides and then we lowered that jack all the way to the ground and those springs just fell out. And I think that because we're on those blocks over there, uh, and I can, I can even go lower, I stopped because I didn't want it to hit the ground, um, we can get those even bigger springs in easily, hopefully. Well, as Freeman mentioned, uh, they're definitely cleaner than the uh, old ones, but they just fell right out, so that was great. And uh, those are the new springs. There's probably a two inch difference there, so we'll see uh, what, that, what that does. Okay, it's 4.13, so another hour and a half went by. So we had a major hassle with the track bar bracket. So, put that track bar bracket on, but the U-bolts extend all the way out, and I don't have a long socket uh, for my torque wrench over there, so I was torquing that dang thing to try to get those to 85, like the video, and the socket wrench popped out, obviously, and my thumb crashed into the jack. So that sucked. So those are pretty damn tight. That's definitely 75. The chassis will tighten when I get on the ground, but that was a pain. The springs took us like five minutes, so those were real easy. We were able to lower this all the way, put the springs in without even compressing them, and then heighten it, and then putting the washers on was a piece of cake. So now we gotta do the shocks. All right, so we are now done with the shocks and we're done with the uh, rear sway bars and the brake lines. So the shocks were super easy. Springs, uh, as I said on the last one, was super easy. Shocks went in great. Um, there was an extra bag in our box. I don't know what it's for. Maybe two bags for the front or we got an extra bag. But it looks like everything in the video is done the same here. So... Um, Reattach the vent valve. So yeah, I think we're ready. Uh, you know, the, the track bar is not connected yet, like they said. So it's on top of the new track bar bracket. So I think I put the tires on now and then uh, torque things up when I put it down. Oh, and time check, it is five o'clock. So uh, we are going a little longer. <laughs> All right. We're done with the back. So uh, let me get a time check here. It is 5.33, so 11.44 to 12.44, 1.44, 2.00, 3.00, 4, 5. So six hours minus 30 minute break. So about five and a half hours, <laughs> one, one part. But took it off the jacks. Um, super big difference uh, in the back there. So 35 inch tires, these are 33, could probably fit. But the cool thing is if I measure, it was uh, 31 and a half there. And if I get a ruler, put it there. We're now at uh, 34 and a half. So that's a good three inches, which they say that's pretty typical. And then the front will be lower. And then if I go over here, it's sloping forward a little bit, obviously, but that's 23 and three quarters, and now it's 20, 25 and a quarter. So it's probably 25 and a half. So that'll give me uh, basically two inches of lift. But it'll probably, you know, we'll see what happens. All right, so tomorrow we're gonna do the rest. I'm just. Uh, tired and my thumb really hurts from hitting that jack stand but other than that everything worked great i don't know what to do with the track bar so let me go to that one that was a cool thing so there's the video doesn't include it <clears throat> so he just said he did it afterwards but he didn't show uh reattaching it and there are two knobs there so what i did was i it was super close to that top one and so i went over to the jack stand i had my son sit here and I lowered it just a little bit and it kept creeping over until it was exactly lined up. And then I just dropped it in there. So I'm mean, gonna, you know, obviously get an alignment. They might tweak it and say, hey, you totally did this like a rookie, but um, I am 100% a rookie. So I have to tighten up just a few things like the, the 
lower control arm I loosened up, so I need to make sure I just tighten that back up to whatever they say it is um, with my torque wrench. But uh, everything looks good. It was uh, a lot of work, but you know, I didn't have any power tools. I used just socket wrench and and, and just simple wrenches. So got got half of it done. All right, I'll uh, show everybody what I do tomorrow. Peace out.